Hello there and uh, welcome. Uh, this is a long overdue video of uh, a load of books that I'm going to be showing. I was meant to do it last week but never got round to it. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this all in one go as there's quite a few books. Um, probably going to take about two or three videos. Uh, so I'll quickly show you them now. All this lot here. So uh, before I um, start with that, I'd just like to give um, a shout out to three of my subscribers that were missed out in my list and weren't mentioned on uh, the 52 subscribers video. Uh, they are Thuggy1, uh, check his channel out, his videos are amazing, he does all little stories from comics. One um, I especially liked was uh, one he did of, um, I think it was Weird Fantasy number 18 or 19. And uh, yeah, I really enjoyed it. It draws you in like anything, so yeah. Nice one, mate. Uh, right, we've got uh, John Paulus Peter. Uh, another guy who shows off a lot of good comic books. Loads of different kinds you know every style I can think of virtually um, yeah check his stuff out really good good guy and all really good guy uh, and also we've got uh, Ravage X9 and I've checked out um, some of his videos as well and they're very good so yeah check them out and if you haven't subscribed subscribe to them as well so uh, yeah Right, this music you can hear, if you can hear it, is uh, by a band called Silverbart, and the um, album's called Four Times Sound Raising from 1972. This is a German rock album. With, uh, only four songs on it. Well, four, one song and three extended tracks. Three of them going over ten minutes. It's got like a heavy rock vein to it with. It sounds a bit similar to Black Sabbath, um, but with an experimental edge, which makes it sound really crazy in that at times. So yeah, if you're into all this sort of stuff, check it out. I don't know if you've heard of the bands like Can and Faust and Kraftwerk. They're some of the main kraut rock bands, German rock. So yeah. Then we have a couple of Doctor Who DVDs. Um, from the William Hartnell era which I picked up recently we've got uh, The Reign of Terror which features um, two animated episodes as the original ones no longer exist very, very cleverly done so yeah and then uh, we have the Aztec Special Edition and this is awesome this DVD there's so many good extras on it so many special features um one in particular is um, the recently discovered episode of uh, Doctor Who Galaxy 4, episode 3, which is called Airlock. And that was exciting to watch. So yeah. And then uh, a friend of mine, Chris, from work, you've heard of him a few times now. Um, he's given me a couple of, uh, well I don't think they're like trading cards, but... Um, uh, uh, actually uh, with um, two of the Kirby Chrome comics uh, Bombast and Captain Glory and uh, they came with three cards and this is the Bombast one and it's the Captain Glory yeah cheers to that mate right uh, now on to the books just give us a sec Right. First one is actually a magazine. And this is from uh, 1975. And this is number three of uh, Movie Monsters. With Lon Chaney on the cover from Phantom of the Opera. 
It's also got um, the Wolfman, Godzilla, Bob, Boss Karloff, Batman, Batman, which is a bit of a weird one, and uh, Forbidden Planet. All little articles on them. Yeah. Then we have um, a Marvel um, magazine comic. This is uh, Monsters Unleashed number eight. And this is a really good book. Um, I've actually read most of it. Really enjoyed it. Um, got all sorts of uh, collaborators on this, writers, artists and inkers, such as uh, Doug Moench, Steve Gerber, um, Neil Adams, who uh, actually does art and writing on one story. Um, George Perez, Al Milgram, Dan Atkins, and Rick Buckler. Plus a few others, um, names I don't really know of. That's a really nice cover, that. Yeah. Right, then we have... Um, some of these books I've already shown before in my uh, drunk video. <laughs> yeah. Couldn't even remember showing them. As I was out of my face that night on vodka and leffy. That's the leffy. Unfortunately, the vodka bottle has been chucked away. Lovely Smirnoff. Brandy's usually my tipple. So, uh, anyway, this is um, from IDW. This is a sketch variant of... Um, Star Trek and Legion of Superheroes number one. And if I do say so myself, I'd say this uh, cover looks quite Kirby-esque. Especially with uh, Mr. Spock here. So yeah, alright. Um, Doctor Who, Prisoners of Time number two. Yeah, some of you have seen the, some of these books before. Um, this one I got thanks to Hero Hunter 81. As soon as I saw it, I just had to have it. It's a cover swipe of um, Action Comics number one. Spawn comic, well, Spawn number 228. I've got to say, the artwork inside this book's really good, but... Oh dear, the story itself. Very dark stuff. Yeah, reality catching up in this one, I'll tell you. Uh, and this is a continuation of um, Masks. Number four, Alex Ross, cover A. Enjoying this series a lot. I do like the 30s pulp characters. Alright, then we have uh, the latest Raw Shark before Watchmen, number four. Got to start this story, start this series again. I read the first issue, but then uh, I lost trail of, of it by the time I got the second, so I'll start it again. Then we have a nice chromium cover here. Um, Profit number one, volume two. I think it's really cheap. 50p this was. Which I'd say was about 75 cents, I guess. Yeah, very nice. I like that cover a lot. Just uh, zoom in. You can see some guy coughing up blood. <laughs> oh, tasteless. <laughs> Right, uh, got some DC ones here, um, two in one bag. This is uh, Mysteries, uh, Mystery in Space number 114 and 115. Nice Joe Cubert covers. One fifteen. Read these comics today and they're awesome. Do like these short stories. Say the EC comics are a very big influence on a lot of these ones. Well, I think Mysteries in Space sort of started about a year or two after the 50s. 
Yeah. And then we have um, House of Mystery number 284. Full cover. like Ramita but I'm not sure if it is nah it's definitely not Ramita right uh, we've got House of Mystery number 285 if you like um, House of Mystery or House of Secrets um, check out um, one of the recent videos of Dakota Comics he had a load of awesome books to show and he picked them up for a right steal very cool stuff. Mm, talking about House of Secrets, we have number 152. This is mad music indeed. <laughs> right, this is uh, Rima, the Jungle Girl, number 5. I picked this up just because I like the cover. Nothing special though, really. Um, unexpected extra Johnny Peril meets the woman who died forever number 213 nice werewolf cover alright on to the marvel got a rawhide kid number 148 I showed this off in the drunk video Simply picked it up because it was different. Don't collect Western comics. It was cheap, so I bought that in my hometown. Got a. Uh, well, I don't really usually pick up um, ROM, although I do have number one. Um, but I thought I'd, you know, get this one because it had two X Men characters, well, three actually. You've got the Blob, um, Mystique, who I mistakenly called. Uh, Majika in my drunk video <laughs> and uh, also um, Rogue and this is a quite a cool Al Milgram cover as well this is uh, number 31 and then we've got a load of Ghost Riders here this is um, number 76 separated at last Johnny Blaze battles the Ghost Rider so we've got uh, Mephisto on the cover there, you can see, I'll zoom in, okay. sounding even more insane now, alright uh, we've got a, uh, it's like a black magician on the front here, this is number 74. like purple covers. And we have um, Ghost Rider number 73 versus the Circus of Crime. Quite an interesting cover. And we have um, Ghost Rider number 64 taking on Asmodeus. Ghost Rider number 63. There's my knocking call. I think someone's uh, telling me that I've got to go down and have my tea. Uh, I'll quickly show these off. Uh, Ghost Rider number 57. I do like that cover actually, I'll show that again. Alright, do excuse me, I'm just going to go down and have something to eat and then uh, I'll be back ASAP. Right then, let's finish this goddamn video. Right, um, 
Continuing now, uh, we've got um, Defenders number 42. This is a really cool cover actually. Um, Rhino, Solar and Egghead, the deadly new emissaries of evil. Really cool one here, and uh, <laughs> I showed this quite a few times in my drunk video. Didn't even remember at all. You know, I thought I'd showed it just the once, but <laughs> Fenders number 52. This is a comic I actually grew up with. I had this in a um, Incredible Hulk annual from 1979, British annual, and um, this uh, story was in it as well as um, the Inhuman story in the first Hulk annual from 1968, American. Really like that cover as well. Always a classic confrontation, Hulk versus Submariner. Right, um... <coughs> excuse me. Um, this is Defenders number 113. 113, uh... Again, really cool cover. I think that's Overmind. Nice yellow scheme as well. And then we have um, Defenders number 114. And I'd say this is quite a unique cover for a Defenders book. The actual wording looks a little bit bigger. It's actually uh, some good artwork inside as well. This is a Perlin and Milgram cover. Yeah, cool. Uh, Captain Marvel number 53. Now, Marvel teams with Black Bolt of the Uncanny Inhumans for the War of the Three Galaxies. Avengers number 229 Egghead on the cover Alright, I just want to show you something quickly um, I was really shocked about how that comic was packaged I didn't pay very much for it but um you know, I thought at the end of the day, it's the principle about it. Basically, you just sent me it in this, this like bag with bubble wrapping inside. Had no protection, no cardboard, and it wasn't bagged and it wasn't boarded. And it really disappoints me that does. You know, whatever amount you pay for a comic I think it should be packaged well and bagged and boarded personally you know if it's bagged fair enough I don't mind that but if it's got no protection or you know anything at all you know this could have easily got bent this book luckily it didn't there was a little bit of a crease on the corner there but um you know, who's to know whether that was due to the packaging or whether that was already like that, I don't know. But I would say this is probably uh, in the region of fine, this book. You know, I'm still happy with it. I only paid 54p for it. So I shouldn't complain, really, but the principle of it. So, yeah, I wouldn't be buying off him again. Then we have um, Captain America and the Falcon. Number 205, and this is a really good cover actually, Jack Kirby. I like this entity on here, it's very cool. I'm just going to show you uh, a page from this uh, book actually, just to show you the greatness of Jack Kirby. So love this, this page. That is just awesome. That is really awesome artwork. Yeah. 
Right, um, continuing with the Kirby stuff. Uh, this is Captain America King Size Daniel number three from 1976. Page after page of pulse pounding fury, Doom is the Black Star. Very nice cover. Now we have a, an underground comic here from 1973, well originally from 73 from Kitchen Sink Press. Um, this actual copy though is from um, H Bunch Associates, it's a British variant from 1974. <coughs> this is called Tales from the Fridge and this is number one. And as you can see it's a swipe of a Tales from the Crypt, and there's their sort of layout. Instead of the Crypt Keeper, we've got the Fridge Keeper. And artwork is by Hack Davis. <laughs> the actual book's actually by um, Russ Jones and Bob Stewart, and Bob is uh, spelt with an H B H O B. Bob. On the back here, you've got how to make and eat your own global burger, and there's the ingredients for it. Need to bag and border that. Yeah, I've read that book as well. It's pretty way out. <laughs> get, I think, uh, you know, there's a point where he gets stoned with this girl and uh, he goes on a trip or some sort of thing and um, he actually thinks he's Dr. Hook, the guy playing guitar on stage. I think he's like some sort of astral projection he has in it, but <laughs> yeah, pretty crazy stuff. Right, uh, we've got um, Vanguard Illustrated, number seven from Pacific Comics. This is actually a key issue, and I saw this in a, um, a 74 Susu video a while back, or a bit, quite a while back. Um, number seven, first appearance of Mr. Monster. Quite an interesting cover as well. Then we have... Um, Another cool book here from Kirby, written by Steve Gerber. Um, thanks to um, Hippies Collectibles, Tom. Um, I wouldn't have picked the, this this book up sooner, but I've always liked this cover because it, it was featured in a um, documentary film about comic books called uh, Comic Book Confidential. And, uh, I remember seeing like a close up of the cover in this movie. It's Destroy a Duck, number one. Special law f Lawsuit Benefit Edition from Eclipse Comics. Very cool cover. Great book as well. Awesome stuff. Right, then the last two. I've got... Uh, oh, I got this for steel. Personally, I think so anyway. I only paid... And about the £5.50 to £6 mark. I'm not too sure how much that is in dollars. But uh, not very expensive at all. And this book's now going up in price. So I'll get it while you can. This is a very fine copy. And it's um, Black Panther, number one. There we go. Such an awesome cover. From Jack Kirby. Really nice rich colours. Love the red up here. It's a real high grade copy of it. And this is a steel as far as I'm concerned. The grade is in. And then uh, my final book. Uh, from 1961, September 61, uh, Marvel book from Journey into Mystery. This is number 72, and in these fantastic pages, you will meet the Glob. This was uh, stated to be a G to VG copy. It's a really solid book, actually. Great to be in G to VG, you know. What 
even possibly notch it up one, I don't know, you know, I'm not really too sure about this one. Got a few spine creases. In relatively good shape though, you know. Only minor creases in that. That is an awesome cover again. I just love Kirby stuff. There we go, that's the end of that. It's not all my books though, I'm going to be showing some more off in the next vid. Might even have some uh, recent ones through the post to show. So, uh, right. Cloud signing out. Take care everyone, I'll see you soon. Cheers.